absolute and relative value. What does that mean? Well, what it means is we actually, in our automation lanes, we're going to get an extra lane to look at of automation when we do relative. So check it out. I'm going to go to volume, and I'm going to choose relative. You see what just happened? Bink! Everything we did just disappeared. Well, here's the thing. It's not really gone. If I move this line down to negative 4 dB, what's happening is we get a volume and then we get this relative volume. So that means that we've actually taken the exact pattern that we have and we've brought it down 4 dB. So check it out. Let me just solo this one track. Okay, and I'll pull it down even further. And you'll see that my fader over here that's moving up and down. Let's check out his actions a little bit. You see I just moved the relative. So we're still getting the movement, but we're able to change its throw. It's We're sort of attenuating it. And I'll set this back to zero. I can even just turn the power off. That's pretty cool. That's actually a major thing as well. You can go through and have several different parameters. So here I've got my relative volume, and I've got my volume. So I can turn the relative volume up and down, or I could just turn that off. So let's see. If I turn the relative volume down, let's have a listen. Now I'll turn the power off. So it's pretty cool. This additional lane that we get, the relative value means that we're taking that entire shape and moving it up and down where the relative position is being moved up and down, which is pretty cool. Now, we also need to understand that concept when we're doing real-time automation. So if I grab a fader here, I'm going to put this into touch mode. And I'm going to grab a fader, but the touch mode itself, I'm going to use relative. And what that's going to do is I'm, I'm going to be able to shove this entire everything that's going on here up and down uh, relative to where it was just like like I just did using that extra lane. But I'm going to use a fader. And if you look at the fader on the left hand side here, you'll see this little yellow line and the fader has been grayed out. So the grayed out fader, check out what happens when I write this automation. Let's just have a look. Okay, I'm going to hit stop and go back. So you see that in the relative lane, it's moving down, which means that the, the movements that I'm creating are gradually going to attenuate, but they're still going to keep their movement. Okay, so this movement is still happening, but like especially this peak at the end is going to be a little bit lower because the relative volumes are going to change according to this line. Now, if I go to trim mode, it's going to write directly to the volume lane. It's not going to go to the relative lane. So as you see, we see it written directly to the volume. So relative means we're going to have this other track, and the other track is going to show us the change that's being made to the volume. And we could go back and edit it, or we can go into trim mode, which writes our movements, you know, we're, we're changing this shape slightly by moving the fader, but it's writing it directly to the volume track. Now this also works for pan. So it's volume and panning that we get the absolute and relative values for. Um, synths and things like that, we don't have that sort of control yet. We may see something in the future, but we might not. So speaking of instruments, I think it might be good to talk about some of the instruments and what they're doing in Logic 10.1. So let's check it out.